brilliant, brilliant, brilliant video from Brendan Cooney of the 10 Minute Podcast. 10 minutes of Shorb is even worse than we thought. And this is really good, but it's also really mean because it takes the piss out of my boy Too Lazy to Try. Okay? Too Lazy to Try is my guy, and I don't like how the winds, the fucking vibe, the ambiance around him has changed. Now everybody's sort of like taking the piss out of him. They don't like him. They're calling him a loser. They're saying he's, you know, whatever. I don't know. These people are just throwing away some, and I don't like it. I like the guy. I think he makes good videos. He has good insights and shit. But there are some times when, you know, he flies a bit close to the sun and shit. It happens. Sometimes when you make content, you're going to inevitably have some bad takes because you make so much. But I think people that are being mean to him are being a little bit too mean. Like, relax. Leave too lazy to try alone. But with that being said, let's watch the video. Very good video. Very, very, very good video. This parody of like, to, to try is fucking brilliant. So big up, big up Brendan Cooney. Can Tweety's guys just continue to embarrass themselves? They are obsessed with Brendan Schaub. Of course, they had another episode <laughs> this week where they had on, you guessed it, Mark Harley, also known as like BGL or whatever. I don't even know what that stands for. <laughs> Seriously, when is it going to end? The Fighter and the Kids subreddit is out of hand. All they do is make fun of Brendan Schaub. So on the show with Mark Harley... They went into this long, rambling segment about that Olympic boxer that may or may not be a man or a woman. It was clear that none of them knew what they were talking about, but Mark is some expert on it. Even the people in the comments were kind of questioning why they would talk about it. And some of the comments specifically were talking about how the guy with the small teeth looked like he was dying or something. Like, he looked like he totally didn't want to be there. And the people who watch the show picked up on that. Now I know why... The only thing they talk about is Brendan Shaw because when they talk about other stuff, they're just really out of their depth. Also on the show, Mark specifically brings up the A Thousands episode. Well, I can't even say A Thousands. A yeah. Thousand. I have a lisp. <laughs> yeah. All right. Also on the show, they brought up the A Thousand. A Thousands? I can't say A Thousands. A Thousand. A Thousand. A Thousand. <laughs> thousands. <laughs> they should just play this. Just good douche me. <laughs> also, uh, the Timos guys completely good douche the 1K episode that TFK had. And honestly, I thought that. Hey, yo, 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 yo. I love these guys, but let's not say Timos again. Let's not, let's not, let's not say Timos. Let's not, <laughs> let's not, let's not say, let's not use the word Timos ever again. Please. Let's keep that abbreviation on for like typing and shit. Let's not say Timos. Come on now. Come on, let's be fair. That's kind of cringe. Episode was really good. That episode really stood out to me. I mean, they got cupcakes. They went over some of their greatest hits. They totally cleared the air with <laughs> Bobby Lee cupcakes. and it made perfect sense. I mean, <laughs> Brendan doesn't really know him that well. And Brian made a mistake. What's going on with you and Bobby Lee? Have you guys squashed everything? Yeah, I, I get it. Respect. Socks were not friends. Make me sad. All good. Grown man. Yeah, but anyway. What else? Yeah, that was funny. He did throw. I didn't realize it at the time, but he did really throw Brian under the bus. He made it seem like he had no issue, and Brian just went off the handle. It's like, bro, Brian went off the handle because he's trying to protect you. You had the issue. You were getting it from all angles. So Brian, like a good friend, a little bit excessive, a little bit too much, but he's still being a good friend. He jumped in front and tried to help you out. He tried to like get on the phone and rag, you know, and fucking bark at Bobby, but obviously it backfired. But still, he was helping you. Bro, like, I don't know him. I don't know the guy. I've never spoken to him. We've never been on tour together. <laughs> but Mark Harley didn't think so. He said that Brendan's behind it, which really sounds like me, just a bunch of malarkey. And Brendan's like, oh, man, 2022 is so weird. Like, I didn't have anything to do with the Bobby Lee thing. It was all Brian's fault. I don't know if you guys saw oh this, but like, yeah. the whole episode... Because his new, like, you know, fuck buddy co-host Shanaz or whatever is, like, a lot of the people are asking, like, what's up with Bobby Lee now? And you're just like, yeah. you're like I feel bad because knowing, like, I'm in that room and knowing how much Brendan didn't want to answer that question. <laughs> but he, do, you, do you guys remember how he, if you watch this, yeah. he completely deflected. Yeah, he's like, I don't even know Bobby. He's like, I, Bobby, I've never friends with him. We're I don't friends. know who he is. Like, Brian obviously totally harassed him. And I'm like, <laughs> knowing the actual inside story of, like, no, you hired fake hackers who told you that Bobby Lee was running the subreddit and I you called me up and I was like, maybe <laughs> sit on that information rather than doing anything about it. And then like two hours later, you're like pretending the LA Times is running some fake story on Bobby Lee 
while he's at dinner <laughs> to make him panic and call you back. And then you ambushed him with, Brian. I'm like, this was all you dude. Yeah. Like, sorry. One thing I did appreciate though, is that. Yeah. Yeah. Big up Mr. O just got home from some hedonistic adventures. JK, JK, it just straight working. It does a strong work ethnic. Big up, big up. Yeah, man, us ethnics, we got to work ethnic. You feel me? And this is hedonistic as well. We're laughing at these comedians and shit. We are hedonistic too, because we've got a head and we're istic. Get it? No, you don't. Okay. <laughs> big up, Mr. O. Like the stream, like the stream. That Mark Harley outed Shab as a rub and tugger, which is something that I'm really against. I don't know why people <laughs> go to shops like that when they could just be watching Too Lazy to Try videos instead. <laughs> One time I'm like, okay, yes, you technically show up at 9 a.m. on Mondays. Sometimes he would just show up randomly like an hour and a half late because he's getting a rub and tug. Um, <laughs> like literally, I, I, I remember like being behind him one time and seeing him pull in. That's, that's a fucking hawk move right yeah. there. Yeah, by the way, that's fucking pause, isn't it? That's pause. I didn't realize at the time. He went to go get rubber tug. I remember being behind him. Ayo, BGL, pause. I remember being behind him while he was getting a rub and tug. On his, or even on his way to get rub and tug, I was behind him. Hey, yo. <laughs> so, it smelled like chocolate and possibilities. It's about to get tropical up in this oh, bitch. Bro, not tropical. It's about to get African. Huh. I'll, get, I'll get on all fours, man. They'll <laughs> jack me off like a, the milk in a cow. I'll get on all fours. They'll milk me like a cow. They'll well, jack that's me off on disgusting. Fours. I don't think in my life, I don't think in my life, I don't think in my life I'll ever hear anybody in my life, IRL, pronounce the word milk milk ever ever i think brendan might be the first and only person i hear in my lifetime pronouncing milk 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 me milk king what milk when it's when it's milk why do you pronounce milk milk when it's actually phonetically spelt milk it's not spelled milk no or am i mistaken m-i-l-k milk or or at worst you may pronounce it phonetically milk milk but it wouldn't be milk you know you know what i mean it makes no sense how his brain rationalizes or get you know it just doesn't i i'm trying to make sense of redactedness but even if you were to try to pronounce it phonetically, you couldn't pronounce it milk based on how it's spelled. You just couldn't. It's impossible. Like chocolate and possibilities. It's about to get tropical up in this oh, bitch. Bro, not tropical. It's about to get African. I'll get, I'll get on all fours, man. They'll <laughs> jack me off like a, the milk in a cow. Milk in a cow. Milking a cow. Milking. Not milking. Not milking. Milking. Okay, cool. Do it again. I'll get on all fours. They'll milk me like a cow. Well, jack milk. Not milking. Hmm. That's yeah, disgusting. Four, and put their digits in my asshole. Have another one put her fingers in my ass. Right? Well, oh, sir, my. you. How would you even ask that? Excuse me. I know you don't speak English. You're okay. I want to get on the fours. You know, mom. Um, yeah, seventy-five dollars. <laughs> That's amazing. He's 75. <laughs> Big up Dylan B. Melka's past tense is fucking, fucking hilarious. <laughs> Melka's past tense. <laughs> How about that milk I had yesterday? <laughs> How about that milk? Yo, Melka's past tense is fucking ridiculous. You are absolutely dumb. I don't let you get all that. Max Rug, Rub. Rubmaps.com. Rubmaps.com. Rubmaps. Yeah, I think it's, it's called Rubmaps. It's an app. Yeah. Oh, did he? Was that a fraudulent slip? Did he meant to say like Mexi Rubs? Is that what he said? Mex Rubs. Mexican Rubs. Mexi Rubs. <laughs> Ooh. Torta Rubs. I don't, I don't know. That's what they say. I don't have it on that's my phone. That's what a guy of a friend told me. I don't, I don't have, have my, my phone. fucking phone. <laughs> or some sort of creep. All in all, the episode was just way too long. They say it's 10 minutes, but I counted and the episode was two hours and 14 minutes. And 15 of those minutes was just the Gerald guy laughing. This little chin guy. You're right. <laughs> and two hours in the episode, um, the audio, there was some weird cut. And it was clear that that 
Jared guy accidentally pushed the wrong button, which is something he does often. <laughs> the guy with small teeth has no idea what's going on in production. <laughs> you can tell he barely knows how to turn on a computer. So it's totally up to Jared and he fails at that. Why doesn't he ever go to a dentist? It's like, it's not that hard to get dental insurance. I just look at his teeth sometimes and I think, man, you shouldn't be doing a podcast. You should be at a doctor's appointment. Some people say it's huge gums, but I don't think that's true. The teeth are very small. And you can tell these guys, their fans are really into them because... This week, everyone was saying this was the best song they did on Timos, but I mean, that's clearly not true. And I think everybody agrees with me when I say that the Prince song was their best cover. Tried to go to Big Boy Nation, but nobody was even there. But it just kept getting worse for them this week. What does TLDR mean? Too long, don't read? Today I learned. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I thought I would get a definite answer from you because you're Mr. Twitter. I mean, is that a Twitter thing? TLDR? I, I never, I'm not. Hey, yo, fellas, that background is crazy. That background, that's like a come up, obviously, because when they eventually become rich and successful and they get their spankly studios with great LED lights and stuff, it's going to look amazing. But as it stands, I know I can't speak too much because I've got just a shelf full of books, but that background is crazy. That background is fucking crazy. <laughs> You know, it's like you got equipment in there that's probably worth more than that room. You know, that is wild, bro. What, the only thing missing from there is like a bed sheet to cover the window as like a makeshift curtain or something. That room is fucking wild. God, um, or maybe it's just messy, but it, it looks like a trap house. Like, what? I'm not on my phone at all, so I think I all, I only see it on Twitter, right? Because things are super long and they don't want you to read the whole thing. So like, too long, don't read. Gerardo put a sharpie in his butt. I'm a boomer, dude. Okay. I'm 58 years old. I don't know shit. They also have another podcast called Raccoon Tweakers. This week's episode was totally boring. And what about the ice? Is she, does she say that and do the ice wrong still? Ice is no longer a problem. I confronted okay. all the workers. I sat them down and I said, if you fucking... I didn't cuss, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Ice yeah. is important to me. They're doing a great job, dude. This one I've had probably for like 30 minutes. You hear that? Yeah, I guess. The, I mean, I never amount. know how much ice you want, but that's that's what that's the perfect amount you got going. I'd rather it be that way, dude. I don't want you to know how much ice I want. You know what I mean? So Gerardo was totally pissed the whole episode. And honestly, it really took away from the show because he was so mad. Let's be honest. He started the episode off with Hernando. Like that really happened. OK, that was a thing he decided to do. And nobody got it. The bit fell flat. And if you ask me, he totally made it up. He just makes up these weird stories. Also, there are times where he goes to Starbucks. And if you look at his social media, he's got ton like so many posts where he just posts like Starbucks people giving him the wrong name. So you can tell he kind of like wants it, but at the same time, it also really hurts him. And let's be honest, the co-host Cooney, he's basically This is such this is such a good parody. This is such a good parody. This is definitely as much as I love my guy too to try. This is definitely something he would do. <laughs> Just investigate the most irrelevant minutia of a detail. <laughs> and use it as an example to point out why someone's a bad person why you shouldn't like them too it's like what how do you even get this you've been making you've been building your case for how long how many instagram stories are these like fucking hell man oh i'd love to use try dead like does he even drink coffee if he doesn't i think he should and out of nowhere Cooney just reveals that he has this weird condition with his foot so i have hammer toe if you don't know what hammer toe is, it's when your toe, like, on, it's just the two middle toes, they curl up like this. Oh. Look, I have so many things wrong with me, <laughs> but my feet among, are amongst the worst. I could They're my biggest out. problem. <laughs> if you think my teeth are bad, d thank God you don't have to look at my feet. Damn. And it's like, uh, we don't want to hear about your feet, but then he just keeps going on, and he has something called hammer toe. I looked it up online, and I cannot believe this guy even wears shoes. Another thing that's really weird is that Cooney, everyone says that, like, he has small teeth, and he's always making jokes about it, but Gerardo doesn't even go to the dentist. Like, he, he at one point, he just interrupts Brendan, and he goes, I don't go to the dentist, and it's like, wow. You know, this is coming from a guy who, when he goes to a barber shop, just looks at the barber and says, do your thing. I mean, this is, this is just something that uh, he has serious problems emotionally and mentally, I think. And that's what's preventing him from um, going to a dentist. And then also like, what's going on with his hair? And it really feels like they're grasping for straws in this episode, because at one point they just start talking about how you can read. And Gerardo says that like, 
he has audiobooks that he can pay attention to, but when he starts reading, he can't visualize or he's not supposed to visualize. I really didn't follow this part. And the whole time I was just staring at Cooney's small teeth. Honestly, <laughs> I was falling asleep just like Cooney. So apparently the biggest thing going on the show right now is that Gerardo has a new pair of shoes. He said a listener bought the shoes for him, but then it goes off into this weird tangent about his family's group chat and his mom hates Biden. And it's like, we've heard a lot about that already. Like we know that his mom and dad <laughs> think that Biden is the worst thing ever happened and that Trump's great. But Gerardo just goes on and on talking about the things that his family says about the shoes. And it's like, honestly, I sort of feel really bad for him because this is a guy whose family won't even be happy when he gets a new pair of shoes. They just say mean things to him. And I almost didn't want to put this video out, but I kind of thought that you guys would enjoy it. So check out my Patreon episodes. I have a new episode about how Gerardo smells and <laughs> and more about Cooney's fucked up. Oh uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Um, big up Kesa Moses. This is funny. Are they beefing though? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think it might just be banter. I think it just might be like comedy, podcast, commentary, banter. It might be a bit of commentary, podcast, comedy, podcast, comedy, 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 banter. Might be just some pure, nice, old banter. But one thing that I thought of when I was watching the video, I was like, rah, man, it's funny to think, isn't it? A channel like that, two to try, and a channel like Podcast Cringe, have completely upset and disturbed the stand-up comedy industry or scene. Had them rattled. Just two guys just sharing their opinions, really. Sharing their opinions on what these guys do has completely rattled them to their core. Mad, isn't it? But I think, I would imagine most of those guys' issues with those channels, I don't think are the strength of what they, I don't think those guys actually listen to what they say or take any of the criticism on board, especially if it's constructive. They don't care. I think their main issue is that those guys sometimes get more views on their videos than the comedians get on their podcast. That's what's annoying them the most. So if they can find a way to just... So I wouldn't be surprised. It's probably going to be career suicide, but I wouldn't be surprised if sometime in the future we start seeing a lot of these stand-up comedians be very, 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 very forthright in claiming videos. The same way that like, I think there's one in hip hop. I think it's Vlad and, and, and Joe Budden. Vlad and Joe Budden podcast. If you try to use Vlad, vid, if you try to use Vlad clips on your videos, sometimes they get blocked. You can't even use them. And Joe Budden it will automatically claim the AdSense. So I've got a feeling sooner rather than later, a group of comedians will probably start doing that because that will just ev inevitably stop all the channels from like reacting or uploading clips because probably a bunch of them are doing them because it makes good money. But I've got a feeling that a lot of these comedians are just pissed that these other channels are getting more views and getting more money than them. So they'll most likely start claiming. Like, I don't know why. I've just got like a, a sneaky feeling that someone's going to start doing it. Someone's going to start doing it. Or at least someone prominent. And then it's going to kind of change everything going on in the climate now. Which is good. Again, will be career suicide, especially these comedians that talk about free speech and counterculture and shit. But I have a feeling it's going to happen because a lot of these guys really can't handle any form of criticism. So... The best way sometimes if you can't handle it, it's just to silence it. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, unfortunately. 